concern, and I, I just want to voice this because I think it's important, um, and I am considering what Supervisor Wattenberger is saying, but, but uh, with all due respect, it, it, to me it isn't about the advantage of any supervisorial district. We have a responsibility to spend resources wisely. So having uh, basically uh, required to produce this document, we've already spent a considerable amount of resources. So for that, I would think that we would come up with a cost-benefit analysis of each of these. And so I have a bit of a concern that it says, after you read over the alternatives, which to me give you a very mixed picture, they don't they don't clearly uh, direct you to one alternative. It's it it would be what what are your criteria? But then it says consequently the county has determined that alternative A is the preferred alternative, followed by alternative B. Who in the county made that decision and based on what? And to to my mind, why you hire consultants is wouldn't wouldn't they be informing the county about what the preferred alternative would be based on scientific criteria? I think the short answer is that um, the consultants did prepare the EIR uh, in consultation with, with staff uh, af you know, through those discussions and with staff's discussions with, with the board. The feeling was that it is most probable that alternative A or B would be the, the ones that the one of those would be the ones that the board would choose. And so there is a certain amount of leap of faith by staff and the consultant. Um, the, the board could easily choose any of the other alternatives. That's absolutely true. But the way it is set up here today, we are assuming that the board would most likely go with alternative A or B. And so in preparation of or anticipation of that move, that is why the findings are set up the way they are. But um, the board certainly can choose any of the other alternatives. Uh, we are just trying to keep this thing on track in terms of in, in terms of efficiency here and getting the IR completed and moving on to some of these other tasks. So if we made a mistake by, uh, by assuming the board would pick alternative A or B, I apologize for that, um, the board can certainly choose an any of the, f the four or five alternatives. Well, that's understood. I just, I just would think that f when you pay professionals to create a document based on their professional expertise, you would get a little bit more guidance. Now, that doesn't seem to have occurred because it says basically the county has has determined the alternative A is the preferred alternative. So I, I just don't. It doesn't seem that it kind of sits with how it's usually done, and I'm just concerned about that precedent level. And I'm not saying that I dispute that it's alternative A, but I think it's important that we bring these things to the surface because if it is precedent setting, I mean, basically then, I don't know, what, what are we paying the consultants for? I mean, I know we need, we need to have this document in place. It's going to be required by the regulatory agencies. So I have that concern. I also have the concern that a number of the regulatory agencies, as you gave in your, in your opening statements, have come up with a different analysis than we have. So I'm also concerned about what's driving our analysis. And you were talking about the overwhelming public concern. Um, I think that's absolutely valid. But I think we also have a fiscal responsibility to weigh the various options, especially because there are long-term fiscal consequences to this. So I was also surprised to not see a cost-benefit analysis of each of the four options to give the board that decision-making information. Because I think it's imperative that we know what the cost factors are. Is one alternative one million and another alternative is uh, ten million? That, that information actually, I, I believe, Supervisor, is on page 2-36. There was a table that was originally developed that actually had 16 different alternatives. Right. And there is an analysis in there of the costs of each of the various alternatives. It's about um, oh, a third of the way down there in that chart. Now, of course, these were rough estimates at the time. Right. And many of these were abandoned. The, the ones marked in yellow where it says notch, for example, the idea was that if you could right. cut a hole in the dam that that would bring them below the jurisdictional limits and so forth. So th there was an attempt, I think, to at least put some cost-benefit analysis into there, although um, th there, w there was no doubt that no matter which one of the alternatives the county selected, it was going to cost some additional money. So Right. And I guess I was trying to glean that information from Mr. Sanford's report, which um, 
really, I think, is an analysis of alternative A, is it not? A and B. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd like to get into the financials of this so people understand what, what we're contemplating here, because I think it's important that we step up and have that, have that recognized if we're signing on to this. Did you come... Can you quickly take us through? I, I added up the short term, which is next two years. Then we go to the mid. I think there's three levels you have in your report. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to, and obviously, if we picked other another alternative, there are going to be significant financial consequences as well. But if we're going to be stepping up and voting for this one, I think it's important to to, to face what these are. Short term, that's within the next two years. I come up with 310000 in a range to 630000 Including including the, the costs of, of the, the fish passage, uh, um, actual implementation of fish passage, uh, burial removal projects, yes, all, uh, that, is, that is the estimate. Now there's a lot of of room left in terms of negotiating specifically which ones, but um, yes, that is correct. Now, something to point out here in terms of the short term, there are, are certain studies that have to be done, and then there are some estimates about the costs of implementing the stream restoration program and, and the fish passage. In terms of in the next two years, you, you are pretty solidly looking at a, a cost of something on the order of $200,000. There will be then <coughs> figuring in the costs of the stream restoration plan and, and then the fish passage there. That will get you up to your upper figure of potentially up to $600,000. Implementation of those things may take more than, than two years. So that, but for, for planning purposes, as we'll say yes, you're talking about something on the order of, of four to 600,000. Now let me also point out that one of um, one of the um, the items here: prepare and implement a stream restoration plan and implement that thing, um, which is a, is an upward upward cost of, of um, well a little over almost um, almost two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That is something that you have to do in all fault for alternatives. So in the short term, you, even if you eliminated all the dams or, or some of them, you still have to to deal and implement with this, this stream restoration program. So that is a cost that is, is a, across the board for, for all of the alternatives. Moving to, I broke this into short term within the first couple of years, or something I called midterm, about five years, and then very long term where we'd get into dredging and, and rehabilitation. Under midterm, the big item there is to conduct the dam safety and engineering investigations. And, and one, of the, one of the speakers from the public today brought up a very key point is that the EIR and the preliminary analysis that was done on the dams is just that, a very preliminary analysis. And it is quite why I don't doubt that we could uh, do an, a study to confirm that yes, they aren't up to current seismic safety standards. A very important point to bring up here is that Division of Dam Safety every year has, has, first off, they've never gone on record as saying we have a seismic stability or, or spillway issue. They have never um, refused, they have never not authorized us permission to operate the reservoirs. They never commented on the draft EIR, and they never commented on the Kleinfelder report. And so the issue here is, I think, a lot has been said about the cost of are we are going to rehab or construct or reconstruct or, or rehab these reservoirs here. But there's a considerable amount of uncertainty still in whether or not, A, we would actually have to do it to the extent originally envisioned in the Kleinfelder report, and B, whether or not there aren't other technologies that are, are far cheaper. So um, it's, it's an important point.